Reading news articles and selections require a deep analysis of what is written to determine accuracy of information. Every author has his or her views that can affect his or her discussion of an issue. Opinions that you as a reader must try to determine and understand. Even the most seemingly factual reports such as an article from Wikipedia can carry an understated or implied judgment. Such judgments reflect an author's bias or preference for one side of an issue over another. So before we examine biases in selections and texts, we must first know the differences between a fact and opinion to better spot inclinations in writing. Well, a fact is something that has actually taken place or known to have existed, which can be validated with pieces of evidence, documentation, or research. Example given in our module are the Philippines is an archipelago with three island groups, Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. It is raining today. Our teacher in English is Mrs. Reyes. So these are facts because they actually took place or known to have existed and they can be supported by evidence. Meanwhile, an opinion is defined as the personal view or judgment about a topic or person, which may, which may or may not be supported by facts or positive knowledge. They are mostly based on assumptions like the examples given in our module. The Philippines is a nation of heroes. I think it will rain today. Our teacher in English is strict. These are opinions because they are more of personal view or judgment about the topic or the person. And sometimes they may not be supported by facts or positive knowledge. Now that we know what facts and opinions are, let's talk about bias. Bias is evident in statements that reflect partiality, preference, or prejudice for or against a person, object, organization, or idea. Much of what you read and hear contains biases if the author favors one side over the other or judges someone without stating facts. He or she has bias. So when an author does not directly acknowledge his or her own bias, the reader, we, must look at the author's diction or the use of facts and opinions. We can ask ourselves of these two questions. First, does the author present more positive evidence for one side of an issue than the other? Second, does the author present more negative evidence for one side of an issue than the other? These are both clues that the author may be biased or, or against a particular side. Now, to be more specific in recognizing biases made by the author of an article or selection, here are the things we need to look out for. Number one, facts and opinions. A while ago, we just discussed what facts and opinions are. Facts are what they are. They are the truth. But opinions can be based on feelings, emotions, or prejudice, which are not objective. Number two, loaded words. Words that are charged with emotion, whether positive or negative, these can reveal an author's opinion about his or her own topic. Number three, stereotypes. Stereotypes if the author labels an entire group, the writing is probably biased. Number four, vague language or generalizations. If the author is not using specific language, this could be an indicator of bias. And number five, one-sided arguments. If the author only presents one side of an argument, his or her writing is probably biased. A biased author may not pay attention to facts or develop a logical argument to support his or her own opinions. As you read resources or materials, keep the following questions in mind. 
The first one is, what are the facts that the author has omitted? So, do we have facts that were omitted by the author? Number two, what additional information is necessary? Three, what words create positive or negative impressions? Number four, what impression would I have if different words had been used? So as we evaluate a source, consider whether the author's bias affects his or her presentation of facts and opinions. While reading, ask yourself whether the material results in one side of the issue being treated more favorably than the other. To explore an author's biases, you must ask whether or where his or her allegiances lie. Ask yourself if you need to look for a balancing viewpoint or approach. Take note that just because of an author has a strong bias does not mean that he or she has written something invalid. However, it is best if you recognize the biases held by the author to balance the information you acquire from the selection or art. So guys, I would like to take this opportunity to acknowledge my grade 8 students who did very well, did outstanding in the first and second quarter. I would like to acknowledge from the section of Kamya, Paolo Dionisio, Sofia Jane Jeronimo, Mianelli Gonzalez, and Jamie Innocentio. For Carnation, congratulations to Leia May Del Rosario, Cassandra Cortez, and Isabel Claro. For Dalia, congratulations to Lynch Radcliffe Palarca, Althea May Perote, Abby Ashley Pingol, and Sharina Polintan. For Daisy, congratulations JV Makiling, James Alfonso Marcelo, Nian Janelle Lopez. And for Rosal, congratulations to Fred Mar Cruz, Rochelle Clarice de Del De La Cruz, Joanna Marie Garcia, and Alexandra Rain Jimenez. Congratulations, guys, and keep it up. Hi, guys. Again, this is Sir Janelle, and we are about to discuss our quarter three. Module number two, recognizing propaganda techniques. So what is propaganda in the first place? Propaganda is a mode of communication used to promote and influence a cause or certain view. It is a collection of messages aimed at influencing the views of people, not giving the opponents any chance to rebut the concept. It is mostly focused on spreading ideas, to manipulate the behavior of many instead of telling them the truth. So why is it important for you to learn or to recognize propaganda techniques? As mentioned, it will help us tell or to distinguish truth from lies. It will help us to avoid being manipulated by what we see. Moreover, it has taken the form of art speeches, music, and films over the years, but it is not limited to these means of communication. Propaganda can also be found in news, journalism, public relations, education, and even in our daily conversation. In short, propaganda devices or propaganda techniques are all around us. It is mostly present in politics and businesses and in many forms of entertainment including TV shows, video games, and social media like Facebook and YouTube. Now, there are different kinds of propaganda tactics or techniques. And these are used in advertisements to persuade people to buy the products. So at this point, we will discuss the first three types of propaganda techniques. First, name calling. Second, Glittering generalities. And third, transfer. Let's begin with name calling. It is also known as stereotyping or labeling. It gives a negative symbol or bad label to establish an unfavorable opinion or hatred to a person or idea. 
This is used to make the audience reject the person or the idea without examining what the label really means and looking at the available evidence. Cartoons and photographs are used in name calling. This technique is mostly used in politics. The most obvious type of name calling involves bad names, for example, Kami, Fascist, Pig, Yuppie, Terrorist, and Racist. So these are examples of name calling. Moreover, we'll see in the picture another example of name calling. So we can see in this picture the rivalry of two Pastillas products. Pastillaceous ever since 2020 and it's my Pastillas, the original Pastillas. We can see the bad label below, the weak one. So this is an example of name calling because it shows a direct attack on its business rival giving it a bad label, the weak one. So the second type of propaganda technique that we will discuss is what we call glittering generalities or also known as virtue words. This is the opposite of name calling. Why? Because this propaganda device uses emotionally appealing, vague, broad words or statements to generate positive feelings in the minds of the masses, which they associate with the product. The words used are highly valued concepts that will connect with the audience's beliefs and values, and they carry conviction without supporting information or reason. So, glittering generalities also links a person or idea to a positive symbol. Slogans are used in glittering generalities. For example, democracy, patriotism, family values, freedom, justice, and glory. So in our module, we'll see another example of glittering generalities. In this advertisement example, it shows a positive feeling towards having a pet. Living with pets makes you live longer and makes your life healthier. So the third type of propaganda technique that we will discuss in this video is what we call transfer. Transfer employs the use of symbols, quotations, images of famous people to impact an idea or claim that carries respect, authority, sanction to make it look more acceptable. Religious and patriotic images are commonly used in this propaganda technique. For example, church, nation, flag waving, university seal, medication, association, or symbol, and science. In our module, we'll see another example of a picture which shows the propaganda technique transfer. So this advertisement uses a symbol by displaying a woman who wears baro at saya a traditional dress and symbol worn by women in the Philippines. Why? To persuade the buyers to buy their own products. So there you have it guys. This ends our discussion of module number two. The first three types of propaganda techniques. And in our next module, we will recognize, we will learn the remaining types of propaganda techniques in module number three. So at this point, I would like to congratulate and take this opportunity to uh, appreciate four of my Rosal students who uh, were recognized or achieved with Honors Award for the second grading period. And they are as follows. Joanna Marifer Garcia, Alexandra Rain Jimenez, Richelle Therese De La Cruz, and Fred Moore Cruz. Congratulations guys and keep it up. So this is the continuation of module number two. From the previous module, we learned what is propaganda and its three most common techniques. 
What are those again? First, name calling. Second, glittering generalities. And third, transfer. This time, we will know other propaganda techniques and their intentions. Now, why is this very important? Well, understanding the intention of the words or expressions used in the propaganda technique is very important because it will help you not to be easily swayed by advertisements. As time goes by, many propaganda techniques are introduced by the different people in the industry in order to persuade the public or a certain group of people to buy a product or to believe or follow an ideology or idea or to do a specific course of action. So here are the other propaganda techniques that you must know. So the first one is what we call testimonial. This propaganda technique uses a famous individual or a celebrity to endorse a product or an ideology or course of action. Again, what is the intention? To endorse a product or an ideology or course of action. Here are our examples. Ding Dong Dantes shows how to wash hands properly. So Mr. Ding Dong Dantes, a very known actor, is used to endorse the proper washing of hands. Another one, Senator Manny Pacquiao endorses a sardines. So he is not only a politician, but also a very famous boxer. He is used to endorse the sardines. These are testimonials because these examples use famous individuals, a celebrity, in order to endorse a product or an ideology. Next is what we call plain folks. So instead of a celebrity or a high value or high profile personality, this technique uses common people or ordinary people using a product or doing an action. It creates appeal to the masses, making them feel that they are of the same status. So again, let us emphasize its intention. To create appeal to the masses, making them feel that they are of the same status. For example, an ordinary boy plays energetically to motivate others to buy the milk he is drinking. Another one, a common teenager munches potato chips. So these are examples of plain folks because they use ordinary people, common people, to appeal to the masses, making them feel that they are on the same status. The third type is what we call bandwagon. Another propaganda technique is bandwagon which influences people to be one of those majority who is already using the product or already following or believing a certain ideology. It touches the emotions of those who do not like to be alone or somewhat experiencing FOMO or fear of missing out. Again, what's the intention? To influence people to be one of those majority to follow or believe a certain ideology. For example, an appeal to wear face masks and face shield shows a table where 80% of people ages uh, 17 to 60 wear face mask and face shield. 18% wear face mask and only 2% for those who are not wearing face mask nor face shield. So what's the goal? The propagandist is influencing people to be one of those majority who wear face mask and face shield. If we see these numbers, of course we will also be encouraged to follow the majority, 80% of the people who wear face mask and face shield. Another example is that a community celebrates a feast where everybody raises hands with a cell phone, creating an idea that everyone in the barangay is already using one SIM. So what's the goal? This propaganda influences people to use one SIM because the community is already using it. So we see that these are examples of bandwagon because they influence people to be one of those majority to follow the crowd or believe a certain 
ideology. So the fourth type of uh, propaganda technique that we will discuss in this video is what we call card stacking. This misleads the target clients because only the favorable details of the product or ideology are being presented. So again, the goal is to highlight only the favorable details of the product or idea. To understand this fully, let's have an example. Young men and women enjoy pleasure of smoking cigarettes or vaping. They say, with just a stick, evaporates all your troubles away. Smoke stressed out. Now, pleasures is, pleasure is emphasized in this technique. However, the illnesses brought by smoking are not mentioned. So this, this is a clear example of card stacking because it only highlighted the favorable details of the product or idea. But remember guys, always remember that smoking is bad for your health. So this ends our discussion of quarter three, module three. Analyzing the intention of words or expressions used in propaganda techniques. Once again, this is Sir Janelle. Thanks for watching and keep on learning. Hi guys, again this is Sir Janelle and welcome to our English class. Quarter 3, week 3. But before we proceed with our discussion, I would like to acknowledge the one who made this uh, PowerPoint presentation. Thanks to Madam Angeline Chiki Mendoza. So let us now start with our first lesson. Determining social, moral, and economic issues discussed in the text lesson 2. So at the end of this module, we are expected to first identify the types of issues or problems from the text lesson 2, classify the issue or the problem based on its types, and assess the listening text in terms of issue or issues discussed in it. Why is listening important for you as a student? As a student, Listening is one of the most essential skills, most important skills that you must develop in order to cope with academic work and with everyday life, especially in this time of pandemic. Also, we use it in our everyday communication. So listening is very, very important for you. So at this point, please listen as your teacher reads the news leads. Because after listening to these news leads, there will be questions that follow. Text A. This is from gutmatcher.org by Lawrence B. Finer and Rubina Hussein. Unintended pregnancy and unsafe abortion in the Philippines. Context and consequences. Despite advantages or advances in reproductive health law, many Filipino women experience unintended pregnancies and because abortion is highly stigmatized in the country, many who seek abortion undergo unsafe procedures. Text B. This is... Now, let's check your comprehension. First question. What subject... What is the subject of each news lead? Have you noticed? Second question. How do you classify each issue presented? Is it economic, moral, or social? What makes you think of this? And what words from the texts support your answer? These questions are very important because that leads us to our lesson proper. We mention three different types of issues that we encounter whenever we listen to something. So what are those? Let's begin with the first one, social issues. By definition, these are problems that influence a considerable number of the individuals with the society. 
These are often the consequence of factors extending beyond an individual's control. Here's an example of a new sleep. The Provincial Health Office, or PHO, has reported that there are 19 new confirmed coronavirus disease 2019 cases in the province as of Tuesday, bringing the total number to 323. So the key word here is the word or term coronavirus. Why is this a social issue? This is a social issue because it deals with health problem, with, with the health problem that affects many in the community. So please remember that, dear students. If the problem or an issue influences individuals in the society, therefore, that is a social issue. Let's proceed to the second type of issue that we will discuss. This is called moral issue or moral issues. By definition, these are actions which have the potential to help or harm others. Notice that if you have an issue of moral concern, it might involve something good or evil. So here's an example of a news lead. Marriage in the Philippines is a sacred vow. As years pass by, there are married couples who are no longer compatible and happy with one another until it leads to separation. So what are our keywords? No longer compatible. Separation. So seeing this keyword, seeing the whole news lead, it leads us to think that this issue is a moral issue because it's about family separation or divorce. So please do remember, dear students, that if a problem or an issue has the potential to help or harm others, it is considered a moral issue. So we already discussed two, social issue, moral issue. Let's talk about the third one economic issues this refers to any such problem in the economy that is concerned with the production of goods and services to satisfy the unlimited wants of the economy through the utilization of scarce resources so just remember from the word itself economic issues has economy in it the production of goods services now here's an example news lead. It was posted in a news article dated January 29, 2021 that higher prices for fuel and meat as well as increased Meralco power rates and excise tax or taxes on alcoholic beverages and tobacco contributed to upward price pressures during the month of January. So what's our keyword here? Higher prices. So this is an economic issue because the problem arises. What is that problem? Inflation. So if the problem has something to do with economy or production of goods and services, automatically, that's an economic issue. So please do remember that, dear students. Now. Listening to people increases your social awareness and develops an unselfish attitude in you. Remember that. When you listen to people, you develop an unselfish attitude. So, it is just necessary that you can evaluate and think critically what you heard about various issues or problems around you rather than being a judgmental person. So antidote, an antidote from being a judgmental person is to develop the ability of listening. Listening with a purpose is important and it gives you a lot or a lot of advantages. Now, here are two types of listening strategies. The first one is comprehensive listening. 
So what is comprehensive listening? It is a type of listening that involves understanding the messages, thoughts, ideas that are being communicated. This is one of the most difficult types of listening because it requires you to not only concentrate but also to actively participate in the process. So remember, comprehensive listening requires you to concentrate and participate. Here are two examples. Taking notes of the speakers idea during an online class that is comprehensive listening so what you're doing right now if you are taking notes you are practicing comprehensive listening another example is by watching the news about the new variant of COVID-19 these are comprehensive listening because this involves understanding of messages thoughts ideas that are communicated how about the second type of listening it is called critical listening. It is a process where a listener goes through using careful systematic thinking and reasoning to see whether a speaker's message makes sense in light of a factual evidence. Examples, listening to a politician's platform during election campaign. Another one, watching a televised debate about legalization of divorce in the Philippines. So, these are critical, critical type of listening because you go through careful systematic thinking and reasoning while you listen to the message. So again, what are the two types of listening strategies? Comprehensive listening and critical listening. Now, here are steps to follow for critical and comprehensive listening. Number one, recognize between facts and opinions. Learn to separate facts from opinion. If something is factual, supporting evidence exists, well, opinions may not be accurate. Andy. So what are the five steps in critical and comprehensive listening? Recognize between facts and opinions. Be open to new ideas. Rely on reason and common sense. Take notes. And number five, listen for total meaning. So that ends our first lesson in this video for module number four, which leads us to the second module that we will discuss in this video. Analyzing literature as a mirror to a shared heritage of people with diverse background. Quarter 3, module number 5. So at the end of this module, you are expected to first. So this lesson will help you to avoid or to become more acquainted with different literary genres from Afro-Asian countries. You will discover through literature how people from different Afro-Asian countries Share the same culture, beliefs, traditions, and values. You will also understand how different literary pieces continue to inspire us and to establish connections among Afro-Asian people. So, Korea. The selection which you are about to read is considered a famous love story from Korean literature. Find out the similarities of Koreans and Filipinos in terms of culture, beliefs, and values as shown in this election. What is this story? The Tale of Chunyang. So if the pronunciation is incorrect, forgive me, because some of these terms are in Korean. The Chunyang Yon is one of Korea's most iconic stories. Although its author and date of composition are unknown, it most likely originated as a work of pansori, a form of musical storytelling involving song and percussion, and was later adopted into prose during the reign of either King Sukjong or King Yongjo. The classic love story has since been rendered into several films, plays, and other dramatic forms. Multiple versions exist as well, 
but they all adhere to the same basic plot. So here is the summary of the tale of Chunya. Are you ready? So it goes. During the Joshua Mong Yong punished the governor and married Chun Yang, who remained faithful to him. The end. Then let's talk about Afro Asian literature. Afro Asian literature reflects not only the customs and traditions of African and Asian countries, but also their philosophies in life, which are predominantly contemplative. Literature brings us to the world of imagination and opens the door of the past to connect us into the present and to the future. The word literature, derived from the Latin word lettera, meaning writing formed with letters. Literature is a term used to describe written and sometimes spoken material. It is most commonly refers or it most commonly refers to works of the creative imagination including poetry, drama, fiction, and nonfiction, journalism, and also song. Literature represents the culture and tradition of the language for a people. Though literature culture heritage can be passed on from one generation to the other generation, it gives people a connection to certain social values, beliefs, religions, and customs. We can also understand the norms which focus on social behavior of people that is typical or expected of a group. That is why Afro-Asian literature mirrors not only the customs and traditions of African and Asian countries, but also their life. So in order for us, to deeply understand literature as a mirror to a shared heritage of people with diverse background, please keep in mind of the following. First, trace our roots. Second, revisit the richness of our past. Third, appreciate our origin. And fourth, connect literature to our lives. So that ends our discussion of uh, module number four and module number five of quarter number three. And I hope you learned something new that you can apply in your daily life and in your future endeavors. But at this point, I would like to acknowledge some of my grade eight Carnation students. Rain Hosson, Angelica Cañete, Lawrence Capiral, Isabel Claro, Cassandra Kailipan, Catherine Camo, Fiona Nicole Camo, and Jervin Sniper for always being attentive and for always being active in our online discussions. So once again, thank you, congratulations, and keep it up, guys. So again, this is Sir Janelle, and in behalf of all grade 8 English teachers, Mam Ann, Mam Rochelle, and Mam Chiki, we would like you to thank you for listening. Please keep safe and keep on learning. Hi guys, this is Sir Janelle and welcome to our English 8 class, quarter 3, module number 6 with the theme, using appropriate cohesive devices in various types of speech. So look for the cohesive devices in the crossword puzzle below. It can be vertically, across, reverse, or diagonally. So the first one has been done for you. We already have the word, therefore. Now if you saw the word or the phrase in addition, you are correct. Write down that phrase, you will also see to sum up, as well as also since and the seventh one hence so all of these words are cohesive devices now in writing sentences in paragraphs 
you will be knowledge you will be a knowledgeable thinker but you must express your thoughts and ideas clearly with coherence basically when a person's writing has cohesion he will keep his writing on track and he will make meaningful connections between ideas within a text so one way of doing this is through the effective use of cohesive devices so what is cohesive device or what are cohesive devices what do we mean by coherence and cohesion so the, our clue here is this word the word connection please look at the following paragraphs paragraph one i want to play guitar i want to play drums Playing guitar makes me happy. Playing drums makes me happy. My brother does not want to play guitar. My brother wants to play the piano. Our parents notice that we are inclined to learn different musical instruments. They asked someone to teach us play the instrument that we choose. Now let's see this paragraph number two. I want to play guitar and drums because it makes me happy. On the other hand, my brother does not want to play them. However, he wants to play the piano. Our parents notice that we are inclined to learn different music musical instruments. Hence, they asked someone who can teach us to play the instrument that we choose. Question. Which paragraph is easier to read? Paragraph 1 or paragraph 2? If you say paragraph 2, you are correct. But why? What words are present in paragraph in a paragraph that are not in the other paragraph? We can see the words like and, because, on the other hand, present in paragraph number 2, which is absent or which are absent in paragraph number 1. Now, how do these words make a paragraph easy to read? So we can see in paragraph 1, there were three different thoughts in three different sentences. I want to play guitar. I want to play drums. Playing guitar makes me happy. Looking at paragraph number 2, those three sentences were already combined or joined together by the words and and because. So three sentences joined together to form one sentence which is I want to play guitar and drums because it makes me happy so those words made the sentences easier to understand now let's look at this illustration like what the picture has illustrated cohesive devices are words or phrases that are used to link or clarify the relationships among ideas in sentences or paragraphs. So imagine, cohesive devices are like this big ring in the middle of these chains. They connect, they link, they clarify the relationship of ideas. What else does a cohesive device do? They join ideas meaningfully. They link sentences and paragraphs together smoothly. They lead to make certain connections or assumptions about the areas you are connecting. They lead readers to forward and imply the building of an idea or thought. Now, cohesive devices can be grouped according to function. So now we will discuss different groups of cohesive devices according to function. The first group is what we call sequence group. What's their function? They show progression of ideas. What are these cohesive devices under this group? First, second, next, finally, after, before, firstly, secondly, meanwhile, now, and then, and many others. Example sentence. Before I begin, I'd like to thank all the line of men and women in uniform for putting me up as a guest speaker in this event. So we see this group of uh, cohesive devices show progression 
O of ideas. Next group is what we call addition or the, what's their function? They add ideas or give further explanation. As well as, in addition, furthermore, and besides that, another, apart from that, moreover, on top of that, another point is. Sample sentence, I saw people in our town who greeted him with respect and humility. Furthermore, I wondered how my grandfather got this respect. So we see that this cohesive devices add ideas or give further explanation, addition from the word itself. The third group of cohesive device is what uh, we call contrast. They show different or contrasting ideas. Examples, in spite of, despite, although, though, even though, nevertheless, but, on the other hand, however, and whereas. Sample sentence. I am proud to tell this story to let you know that we are blessed in spite of, see the contrast, difficult situations in the time or in the line of our work. There are people who admire us and trying to pursue a career to be a police officer. So in spite of is a word, cohesive device, which is used to show different or difference or contrast of ideas. Next group of cohesive devices, result. They show what happened after an action. Yet, since, as, hence, for that reason, as a result, consequently, thus, because. Sample sentences. There are also people that even members of my family who asked me why I had chosen this career. Hence, See what happened after an action? I smiled and answered them with sincerity that I want to serve our country. So again, this cohesive devices show what happened after an action. Fifth one, conclusion. They show the overall ending. Words like finally, therefore, to conclude in conclusion as a result, in the final analysis, to sum up, these are cohesive devices that show overall ending. Sample sentence, in the old times, being a farmer was hard and difficult. Therefore, my father became the bow and arrow of my grandfather while working hard in the field. Sixth group, time relationship. They show relation in time from the word itself. These cohesive devices are before, meanwhile, later, soon, at last, earlier, thereafter, afterward, by the time, from then on, first, next, presently, shortly, immediately, finally. Love your enemy. Later, see, showing the relation in time. He will learn to love you. Number seven, illustration. What's the function? To show an example. What are the cohesive devices under this? For example, for instance, specifically, such as, to illustrate in the case of. Sample sentence. My father was responsible and hardworking. For example, he could provide our basic necessities like food and medicine. We see the different, seven different groups of cohesive devices according to function. Now, there are different types of speech according to purpose because our lesson is about using cohesive devices in performing or delivering a speech. We will now talk about speech, their types according to purpose. The first one is what we call informative speech. Basically, this speech serves to provide interesting and useful information to our audience. It also aims to educate the audience on a certain topic, just like what we can see in our example speech. This is a speech about the importance of health. So the speaker used cohesive devices to show contrast as stated in the line, 
one can survive without excess money, but, see the contrast? Using the word but, can survive without good health. On the other hand, the word moreover in the sentences, money doesn't make a person rich and happy, happy, but good health does. Moreover, a person can feel complete and happy without good health. Moreover here is used to give additional idea to the previous stated concept. So the first type of speech according to purpose, informative speech. Second type of speech according to purpose is what we call demonstrative speech. This speech is also referred as process or how-to speeches. It aims to demonstrate or provide necessary, necessary steps to guide audience in accomplishing a specific task. So here in our example, it provides steps on making an apple cake. So the function of cohesive devices used here is for sequencing to show the baking procedure. Hence, it used cohesive devices such as first, and then, after that, so those are different cohesive devices used in this demonstrative speech. So we already have two, informative, demonstrative speech. The third one is what we call persuasive speech. A persuasive speech works to convince people to change in some way. The way they think or do something or to convince them to start doing something so from, from the word persuade. So in this speech, um, we can see that uh, it is a persuasive speech because it uh, convinces people to change the way they think or do something. This is a speech of Nelson Mandela. His speech commonly aimed to inform, convince the audience to believe a certain viewpoint. In this example, he accompanied his claims with cohesive devices such as and, in conclusion, and but. Persuasive speech. And finally, the last type of speech according to purpose, entertaining speech. This is also referred as Special location speeches. It aims to evoke the audience emotion. It commonly has anecdotal information. So the speech given aims to amuse the audience and capture their attention. Entertaining speeches are commonly delivered in special locations. And in this speech, the speaker used cohesive devices such as because and before. So we see the four different types of speech according to purpose. So that ends our first module for week number four. Let us now proceed with our second module, English 8, quarter three, module seven, using parallel structure. So what is this about? Carefully observe the following sentence structure. I noticed plenty of plastic bottles, used diapers, worn out sleeper, dry nipple leaves, old bamboo poles, and dead animals. So what have you noticed? This sentence contains a series of adjective phrase. Adjective, words that describe a noun or a pronoun. How did it become adjective phrase? Because in each phrase, it already included the words that they describe. Plastic bottles. What kind of bottles? Plastic. Adjective is plastic. Bottles are the nouns. Adjective plus the noun equals adjective phrase. And everything in this sentence are all adjective phrases. Sentence number two. My friends, the calamities call us to reduce, reuse, recycle, and restore. So this sentence is a series of verbs. Earlier, adjective phrases, but now we have series of verbs. 
Third sentence, modern houses were flooded, numerous crops were damaged, and properties were destroyed. The sentence combines three parallel clauses using the coordinating conjunction in. Fourth sentence, not only the poor households were affected, but also the rich families were affected. In this sentence, there are two different clauses connected by not only, but also. Question, what did you notice in the given sentences above? Well, you may have noticed that in each sentence, it contains a series of same grammatical composition. So, we are aware of the parts of speech, nouns, pronouns, verbs, adjectives, adverbs, prepositions, conjunctions, interjections. So, we, we do not mix them in a series. Just like what we see in these sentences. Notice how each sentence is written when the writer or speaker uses similar grammatical forms. This is known as parallel sentence structure. So if the sentence or the speaker or the writer uses similar grammatical forms in a series, it is called parallel sentence structure. It is a repetition of certain grammatical form within the sentence. We can also call it parallelism. Parallel structure means using the same pattern of words to show that two or more ideas have the same level of importance. Parallel grammatical structures can be two or more words at the same part of a speech, two or more phrases of the same type, or two or more clauses of the same type. Try to look and analyze the sentence examples below. For parallel words, we mentioned earlier, can be words. See here, ag agricultural land became populated, urbanized, and commercialized. So three words, they're all uh, words. That's why they are categorized as parallel words. Let's see if we can use it with parallel phrases or groups of words. I noticed plenty of plastic bottles. So this is our example earlier. No? Used diapers, another phrase. Worn out slipper, dry nipple leaves. Old bamboo poles, dead animals. So we can also use them in phrases. We can also use them with clauses. Parallel clauses. Modern houses were flooded, numerous crops were damaged, properties were destroyed. This is considered a clause or clauses because each of them have subject and predicate in it. So, there are parallel words, parallel phrases, and parallel clauses. Remember though, this is a word of caution. In constructing sentences with parallel structure, the following pointers have to be remembered. First, use parallel construction when a sentence contains a pair of connected ideas. Pairs can be connected by coordinating conjunctions which include and, nor, but, or, and yet. Second point, use parallel structure when a pair of ideas were linked by a correlative conjunction such as not only, but also, either or neither nor example given not only the poor households were affected but also the rich families were affected so this is something that we need to remember so there you have it guys this ends our short discussion in this video lesson of our modules 6 and 7 for quarter 3 English 8 and in behalf of all grade 8 English teachers Ma'am Ann, Ma'am Sheila, Ma'am Richelle, and Ma'am Chiki we would like to thank you for watching this video and we hope that you learned something new and if there's something that is not clear with you with regards to our lessons you, may, you can always go back to that part 
of this video. So once again, thanks for watching and keep on learning. I would also like to acknowledge some of my students from Grade 8 Daisy, Nian Janelle Lopez, Althea Capiral, RJ Manlangit, Gabriel Cruz, James Alfonso Marcelo, JV Makiling, John David Lazo, and Joshaya Micaela Delisay for always being active in our online discussions. Keep it up guys! So for your final performance task in English 8, we, your English teachers, have decided to give you this activity. This activity was taken from your English 8 quarter 4 module number 7, whereas you will read carefully the written speech by Gustavo Gonzalez. Take time to practice reading it and then video record it and submit it to your respective teachers. The checklist provided will be used in evaluating your speech. Now to give you an idea on how to accomplish it, here's an example. The COVID-19 pandemic has unveiled an important number of vulnerabilities as well as exposed our weaknesses in preventing shocks. It has also shown that the magnitude of the challenge is exceeding the response capacity of any single partner or country. It represents, in fact, one of the most dramatic goals to work together. The success of this battle will greatly rely on our capacity to learn from experience and remain committed to the highest humanitarian values. Our real-life heroes are already giving the example. COVID-19 might be today's supervillain, but it does not deter our real-life heroes from doing their job and tirelessly working to find ways to combat the threat and eventually beat the invisible nemesis. We mourn the thousands who have lost their lives to the virus across the globe including my colleague, whom I have spoken of. At the same time, we join Filipinos in upholding, in the midst of great adversity, the tradition of celebrating the best of human kindness, generosity, social justice, human rights, solidarity, and Bayanihan spirit. We celebrate what makes our frontliners and humanitarian real-life heroes. We salute them for continuously putting their lives on the line despite the risks and uncertainties. Their efforts must not be overlooked or forgotten. There you have it guys. So your performance will just be less than two minutes. Please take note that you do not need to memorize the speech. Rather, you may have a copy of the speech in front of you, or you may use the copy of the speech that we will be flashing at the latter part of this video. Basically, all you have to do is to practice reading the speech and prepare yourself for video recording. Now, here's the checklist that we will use in evaluating your speech. We, your grade 8 English teachers, are pretty sure that you can do a lot better than what you have seen in the example earlier. Now, it's your time to do it yourself. Are you ready? Here we go.